What's going on, guys? I'm Ben Bateman. And I'm Andrew Guy. And we are the, the Action, Action Guys. The Action Guys. Those are both pretty bad Schwarzenegger Those were both really, really good. Who would have thought that if you put Schwarzenegger speaking over Schwarzenegger, it gets worse? <laughs> <laughs> By two really bad impersonators. Although yours is usually pretty good. Yeah, well, if I have the words prepared. <laughs> you didn't write a soliloquy or a monologue for this? No, I didn't. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Action Guys. And uh, honestly, before we start the show today, we have a really exciting announcement. This show started almost a year ago now. It yeah. was all it was all on video. Uh, some things got moved around. We went to audio for a while. We loved it. We've got a lot of downloads there, and we've we've been moved back up. We've been upgraded back to video again. Yeah, we they basically like sent us down to AAA. They, they had did. a lot of home runs. Drew was a really really good manager. And, I'm a really uh, good manager and I'm a I'm a great sack bunt guy, but they won't play me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of game tape, but uh, unfortunately there's just guys with, you know, they're <laughs> they're better to look at unfortunately. They really are. They yeah. really are. Uh, <laughs> so we've been promoted back to the big leagues here. It's a lot like uh, it reminds me a lot of in Bull Durham, right? Like I'm uh, Crash Davis. Nope, don't know where you're going with this one. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're on video again, though, <laughs> and it's really exciting because we're going to be on the Collider Live feed on the weekends. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the Collider Live channel. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you can get the announcement for when we go live because we're not sure yet. It's going to be either Saturday or Sunday, yeah. either morning or night. Not 100% positive, but that's part of the excitement. Yeah. So you got to find out. It is. I mean, and it's it's cool that, uh, you know, we, we are going to go back to video. So we're going to be able to, like, anytime we make a dumb face or reference or one of us. Uh, you know, just does something embarrassing, you'll see it. <laughs> yeah, and all you people that have been lucky enough to not have to look at our faces, do that stupid intro for a year on audio, now yeah. you have to watch us do it. Our intros become a thing of legend. They it make really fun has. of us on other shows. It's <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. That is a true thing. That's what happens. I like that we know that it's not cool and that it doesn't look or sound great, but we always do it. And that's exactly what I want the fans to know. Is that what consistent. you tell yourself? We're consistent. <laughs> Every morning I wake up and I go, we're the action guys. <laughs> I put on my pants two legs at a time. Um, yeah, so... The we, hell are we talking about? We are talking about today, Sly versus Arnie, greatest action hero of all time. Uh, really, who's had the better career is kind of the uh, the conversation. It's inspired by the fact that we just, just reviewed Terminator Dark Fate. So uh, we did see some Schwarzenegger. We recently reviewed Rambo Last Blood. Yeah, we covered both of those movies within the last month, I'd like to say, on Action Movie Anatomy over on the Popcorn Talk Network. Action Movie Anatomy goes live every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And yeah, we talked Dark Fate today, and you and I actually really enjoyed Dark Fate, even we, though a yeah. lot of people out there don't enjoy that we enjoyed Dark Fate. Yeah, it seemed to offend a lot of people. We we were <laughs> we were fans of the movie. Um, not all parts, obviously. We, yeah. we both acknowledged that it had its flaws, but I think we both enjoyed it. We did a full review Sorry, I'm burping here. It's all right. You got that cold brew. It's helping. It's I good. Well, the... we're back on video now, so yeah. people can watch you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you decided to bring coffee so you could drink and make your teeth yellow on camera. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we really enjoyed Dark Fate. We did a full review over on Action Movie Anatomy, which is a show on the Popcorn Talk Network. You guys can go kind of hear us do our whole conversation about the franchise, where it should go. And then mm -hmm. also... This was really fun that we decided to do this. We've been doing these trailer reactions for Popcorn Talk. Oh, yeah. And today it was like, ah, we could do this new Sam Jackson movie. Or like, I was like, maybe we'll just do like, I don't know, Edge of Tomorrow or some other trailer. There's like a new like. Mandalorian spot. And then it was like, what about the trailer for Terminator Salvation? That movie oh. looked so sweet when it came out. Yes, it and, did. Now, and, all of you at home that are already like angry about it, us even mentioning, go back and watch the trailer. It's amazing. I think I believe it's trailer two. Whatever, whichever one it is, it's the one that starts out with like the music and you hear the voiceover from Bale. And he's like, "This is John Connor. <laughs> For hearing this, you are the resistance. I'm Batman. Where are the drugs?" <laughs> <laughs> I also like right after he says, "You are the resistance," it cuts to him uh, and he shoots the skeleton. Yeah, the, like the, 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 the Terminator the, head. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It really is. <laughs> For how bad of a movie it is, it's amazing they were able to cut such a sweet trailer. They're going to get our money again tonight because we're both going to rent that movie. They are. And uh, even though I know it's bad. We've literally dug our own graves. Yep. We've set ourselves up for failure, and that's how our night is going to end. Disappointed watching Sam Worthington and Christian Bale. Uh, Don't forget but, about Bryce Dallas Howard in Common. I will. I will forget about them. <laughs> um, but yeah, we covered Dark Fate recently. We covered Rambo Last Blood recently. We actually enjoyed both of them. And so... This has been an ongoing conversation for decades Since now. Since the dawn of time. Since the dawn of television and film. Um, and it feels like 
it's an interesting conversation because they've had such drastically different careers. Stallone's always been a little bit more heady. He's always been a little bit more of an quote unquote actor. Whereas, artist. He treats himself. Yeah. He's always treated himself as a bit more of, a, of an artist. Whereas Arnie has kind of just been a superstar action hero that plays the same guy in every movie with slight variants of it. And you can even see the extension really of like who their what their personalities were and what their aspirations were. What, you know, obviously as Schwarzenegger had public office for like number of years. Right. You know, and like did he actually make movies when he was governor? Or only right before and after. Right after. Right okay, before I and after. So. I think legally he could I think he could. Yeah. yeah. I think he, his last film that I think he did before he took office was uh, collateral damage, I believe. It's a sweet movie. Yeah. I actually enjoy that movie. Federal Damage in T3, and then I think right after he does, he comes back, and his first movie back is like, is it like the one with Abigail Breslin? Is the bad guy in Maggie? Collateral Damage, is it, is it our boy? Is it is it The Rock's brother? Cliff Curtis? Is it Cliff Curtis? I think it might be. I think it might be as well. Yeah, sweet. It's so cool they're related, him and The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> they look just like each other. <laughs> so that is that is today's conversation. Schwarzenegger versus Stallone. Uh, it's inspired by a Twitter post, actually, from Matt Kearns, who runs yeah. our Twitter for Action Industries. You guys can go check that out, at Team Action Show on Twitter. All the rest of the places, if you want to find our stuff, uh, we're Action Industries. And you can find me personally at Ben Bateman Media. Yeah, you guys can find me at Andrew Guy. And speaking of our Patreon, we have a really cool announcement. Uh, we, we did a new show last night for our patrons on our Patreon and uh, we're going to talk about it because it was so much fun. It was such a success. Uh, we're going to make it public, and we're going to make all of you watch it because, honestly, it was just a damn good time. It was great. It really was. So today in talking about Sly versus Arnie, we're going to be talking about these categories, career-defining role, which if you guys have watched our shows, you could probably figure out what that is even if you haven't. Career-defining role. Living in the shadow of that said role, the golden era, the dark ages, the resurgence, the official ranking, and, of course, the snap, the Thanos snap, who gets snapped away. And meaning that if you had to snap away one of their <laughs> oh, yeah, entire careers in existence. I like how I just speak as if Marvel is just like air. Yes. Like everyone just knows. Everybody breathes everything. it. Yeah. Yeah. That if, if you were to snap away the existence of Schwarzenegger still on their whole career, uh, who would you miss more? Who would you be sadder to see their whole career leave? And yeah. so those are kind of the things we're going to use to break the whole thing down. Um, I We will talk a little bit more about Patreon on those things later in the show. So stay tuned if you want to hear about a way to get involved uh, and actually compete against Drew and myself yeah. in kind of a debate show, which is really, really a fun thing we're doing. So, And if you're not patient, just go to patreon.com slash teamaction right now and you'll see the first episode of said show. If you sign up at any level, let's get right into it with career defining roles. Role. Let's do the easy one first, right? Arnie's career-defining role is 100% Terminator. Yeah, so Schwarzenegger comes out, you know, he uh, he's in the film Pumping Iron, which I believe is released in 76. And at that point, he's done, I think it's like seven years. It's like six or seven years of... Uh, Olympia. Uh, of Mr. Yeah, Mr. Olympia. And, 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 you know, he's very famous in the bodybuilding world. He's a well-known quantity, but he's not a movie star yet. He's not, like, world famous. He's, like, you know, just famous. And he's a super strong guy. That movie comes out. A lot of people watch Pumping Iron. People like it. So Schwarzenegger starts showing up in movies. And, uh, you know, the late 70s see him show up in a bunch of movies, you know, like Stay Hungry. And he's in, uh, you know, Hercules in New York. And, and he's showing up in these movies. And then all of a sudden, 84, he's in The Terminator. Breaks his career wide open. Yep. From then, from then on, after The Terminator, Schwarzenegger is the biggest action star in the world. Um, the funny part is, by the time Schwarzenegger becomes the biggest action star in the world, Terminator comes out in 84, and 85, Stallone has his biggest year. So yeah. Stallone was really Insane famous. Insane year. Stallone was already way, way, way famous. He was already an A-list biggest guy. He, he was the biggest action star when Schwarzenegger came out. So, like, that's, I think, a little bit of what the what the battle was there, right, is uh, you obviously had Stallone in 85. He releases Rambo First Blood Part Two and Rocky IV. Yeah. So... That's when Schwarzenegger really breaks out. He becomes a known quantity. Well, right, because he does Terminator and Conan the exact same year. He follows it up with Red Sonja and Commando the following year. So these guys are both, they're literally throwing haymakers. They've right. both broken through, but they've broken through in an insane way because Conan and Conan the Barbarian and Destroyer are kind of like, you know, no one really talks about him that much. They talk about him more like retrospectively being like, oh, I saw Terminator and then I went back and watched Conan. Well, I think the crazy thing, too, is that by the time Schwarzenegger had taken the throne where he was making, like, the biggest movies in the world, mm -hmm. so let's just say it's, like, 87 to 94, by the time that's even happening, Stallone's already at the back end because Stallone broke through <clears throat> almost a decade before Schwarzenegger, really, as a movie star. Yeah, I mean, his first movie is in 69, The Square Root. Yeah, and Rocky in 76 is the thing that makes him Stallone. Mm -hmm. You know, so in 76, he becomes Rocky, and, and he be, that becomes his career-defining role. I think we can both agree... 
the career defining role for these guys are respectively the Terminator, and it's like. Yeah, it's the Terminator, and it is Rocky Balboa. Yeah, and I think the, the the interesting part of this becomes, you know, what is their secondary role, which is something that usually you don't really care about that much with, with a person. You, you figure out their career-defining role, and it's kind of done there. But, you know, Stallone has such a massive secondary role in Rambo as his second career-defining role. I mean, we again, we just got another Rambo movie that— the conversation then becomes, well, what's Arnold's? And, you know, I, and usually before the show, when Ben and I walk in, we'll bump into our good friends, John and Riley, you know, John John Roca and, and Mark Riley. And and I asked both of them, basically this conversation we're having right now, so what is Arnold's true secondary career-defining role? And, and it's kind of all over the board. Because you assume, you know, for it's pretty obvious after after Rocky, it's Rambo. I don't think there's it, any it, it conversation. It just feels like it has to be. I don't think there's any question. It's, it's definitely the case. No. And then for for, for uh, Schwarzenegger, though, it goes, they they literally said five movies, like almost all at once. It was like Twins, Kindergarten Cop, uh, and uh, Predator, uh, True uh, Lies. Predator and True Lies. Those are the four. I can't remember what the fifth one was. Uh, I mean, it, it could be Mr. Freeze. And yeah, Batman it, and it honestly could be Mr. Freeze. But it's so interesting because he does a very different thing in all those movies. He's still honestly like a version of Arnold, but... None of those really hit. Like, they're all great. I actually enjoy every single one of the movies I just said. They all hit. They just weren't franchises. They weren't He's... franchises, and they, they're they also—I don't just go, oh, yeah, it has to be him in True Lies, or it has to be him in this. I think, I mean, there's not a, there's not a Rambo movie that's as good a movie as Predator to me. First Blood's worse than Predator. There is not a Rambo movie that is as good as Pre- Well, that's... Eh. I, I'd give Predator the slight edge over First Blood. And okay. I think I would probably do the same thing. I probably would do the same thing with True Lies. I might give First Blood the slight nod over True Lies. But, like, I don't think... I think that the quality of the hits produced by Schwarzenegger, even though they didn't become iconic performances, the hits are great. Like, the, his biggest hits are, are huge hits. They're all great. Yeah. But I think the fact that just, you know, Stallone played Rocky so many times and he played Rambo five times and he's still making those movies today, Schwarzenegger just doesn't, he doesn't have another one. He he took public office for eight years. Right. Like <laughs> his other one is governor. He Yeah. I mean, truly. Yeah, and that's, that's the governor. That's actually kind of an interesting point, you know? So I, I think uh, if you're going to if you're going to go there, the pound for pound win on the conversation is that Stallone has a secondary iconic role. Yeah. And Schwarzenegger really doesn't. But... Now you start to ask the question, living in the shadow of that first role. And it really does feel like that this category was kind of created because of Sly. It feels like he's trying to get away from what made him famous, whereas Arnie leans into it. You know, you, if you go and you look at their filmographies, and I think it's really, it's kind of fascinating because Sloan works a lot. He works a lot in his early career, but by the time that he's doing Rocky IV and Rambo First Blood Part Two, you see right before those movies, he did Rhinestone. After him, he does Cobra. Then he does Over the Top. Then you've got Rambo 3. Then it goes Lock Up, Tango Cash, Oscar. So he's, the whole time he's towing this line of, yes, I'll be this action star, but as you said at the beginning of the show, I am still an artist, and I get to do my artistic work, whether that's Rhinestone, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, or Oscar. Right. Oh, for sure. I mean, he wants to be, he wants to be doing funny stuff. He wants to be pushing his limits. He wants to be, you know, directing. He wants to be doing all kinds of stuff, mm-hmm. writing. He wants to write all those movies. I think the big difference is that because he started and was so much more famous so much earlier, by 1996, uh, Stallone goes off a pretty major deep end. 96. 96 is about the end. Yeah, because like, it's, it's he he does Judge Dredd <clears throat> right before that, which, you know, people like enough. Yeah. Then it goes Assassins, Daylight, Copland is kind of the last thing in 97. And then it's just a bunch of movies you don't even, like The Good Life, he's in Ants, he's in Get Carter, Get Driven, Carter, I yeah. See You, Avenging Angelo. Right. Taxi 3, Shade. These are not good movies. No, it's also the part of his career that, like, you worked in a video store for a couple years in college. It's the part of his career where most of those movies are known from the box cover, not from 100%. actually ever having seen them. And yep. that's the same for me. I, like, I remember Hollywood Video and Blockbuster going in and seeing a lot of the movies you're talking about, never picking them up. The, I can remember the cover to all those movies, Driven. Uh, I remember the cover to Get Carter. I remember the cover to Avenging Angel. I remember the cover to I See You. Like, mm-hmm. most of those ones in the 90s, when I was much younger, I saw all those movies. I saw Daylight in theaters with my dad. I, I saw that. I remember I remember seeing that movie. Um, I saw Cliffhanger in theaters with my dad. I, like, can remember seeing a lot of those Stallone movies. And so th- the weird thing is it's not as though Schwarzenegger 
at the same time right. keeps making hits or anything like that. Well, and he also does have the weird ones, right? Because technically, Kindergarten Cop is kind of a weird one, kind of. I mean, he's an undercover cop, so it's a little bit more... He still is playing the badass of the movie, but then you go, it's like, oh, well, yeah, well, Twins is in there. And people like Twins, honestly. They yeah. really do. Twins is in there. You got Dave in there and, and you know, 93. So it's like throughout all this... He has him, but he has a lot more of what you expect and kind of want out of him. Red Sonya, Total Recall, you know, Last Action Heroes in their True Lies is in there, Red Heat, The Running Man, all this. Don't forget Raw Deal. Don't forget Raw <laughs> Deal. I, I see it right there in 86. Um, you know, Twins is after Red Heat and before Total Recall, but he's still doing all the those, those really big action movies. I think what it comes down to for me, if we're going to have the conversation <clears throat> about living in the shadow of the role, is that Schwarzenegger benefits from only having the one iconic performance mm -hmm. and having so much time between Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. And not writing mm -hmm. because the, the story. If you look at all the second, so let's just take Rocky and Rambo out of it for a second, like which you obviously can't do because it's a massive yeah. part of his career. But let's just say we're going to only focus on non-Rocky, non-Rambo movies, and that includes Creed. What are the three best Stallone movies? What are the three, like the biggest of the biggest <sighs> ones that we think are great that are not Rocky or Rambo? If I, right offhand, if we're going to combine quality and and mix it with uh, I'm getting hot. <laughs> I can't even like think of. I guess I guess Copland. Copland's probably the highest like quality performance would be my guess. I think Cobra is very famous. People like Cobra as an action I was movie. Say cliffhanger instead. Yeah, you could go Cliffhanger, Demolition Man. Like mm -hmm. that's the that's the run we're talking about. I think uh, those feel like the movies. Tango and Cash. People yeah, like people enough. like Tango and Cash. Uh, we're but, reaching here though. I mean, this is this yeah, is none of and, these. None of these are such slam dunks. And we are definitely in the group of people that really does not like the Expendables movies. No, no, those are those movies are. Yeah, those those are. Are we in a in a minority in any in any sense of the word when it that, comes to that no. franchise? No, those movies those movies are like made. For the lowest common denominator action fan, not yeah. not in the sense that not they're in, stupid. In, yeah, exactly. They're but made they're for just... the action fan that wants to watch a bunch of action guys be like action guys, action guys, <laughs> yeah, dumb yeah. one-liners, cigars, big guns, helicopters, get off my plane, shitting on each other. Yeah, the stuff. Yeah, Hundred percent. It's like kind of the stuff that we like found really funny. The why why we started action movie anatomy in the first place, but the stuff that we realized pretty quickly was like this not cannot... enough to make the movies feel watchable. Like yeah. do they, it's good to do that sometimes it's very enjoyable but most of the best action movies the ones that we like the most are rooted by like a really great performance you know like you take you take an ed harris and the rock i'll take that over the entire expendables cast any day of the week right like an yeah. oscar worthy performance in an action movie is everything same thing gene hackman and crimson tide those are the kind of performances that when you watch those you're like well the reason this movie is watchable is because like you have an Oscar-winning Oscar actor the doing something. In, yeah. Even Malkovich and, like, take Malkovich and Con Air. Like, the movie's not great. He's a great villain. Yeah. He's a great villain. Like, that's the point. Yeah, he really is. Uh, so it does feel like you talk about living in the shadow, and it feels like Arnold is kind of the one that comes out on top in that one just because of well, exactly what you said. Because if you go with the same conversation and you try to establish <clears throat> what are the three Schwarzenegger movies that are – Outside of the Terminator, it becomes endless. It becomes an endless combination of three movies that usually will always include True Lies in, in at least one of the spots and Predator in, in one of the spots. It just you give me Predator, True Lies, and let's just say for the sake of argument, Total Recall. Any of or them. like for the sake of argument, you give me Batman and Robin. No, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> Batman and Robin, Kindergarten Cop. People love Kindergarten Cop. People love Twins, Commando. You give me any yeah. of those movies, like. If Commando is my number three and it's kind of laughable and you're making maybe an argument that Cobra is the number one Stallone movie possibly, like somebody's going to argue that. Yeah. They're on the level. Like there isn't – so that to me – but then again, the fact that you have an entire second franchise of movies in Rambo. So it's close. But I definitely think that Stallone lives in the shadow of Rocky far more than Schwarzenegger lives in the shadow of Terminators. So I give him that one. Yeah, I, I definitely agree there. So then the next thing up we have is it's the golden era. And both these guys, I mean, honestly, it does kind of feel like the golden era for them starts early on in their career. I think if, like, let's just say, we always talk about this, right, with the action stars. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about uh, the best the best five years, the best ten years. So, like, if you're a true legend, if you're a legendary actor, yeah. you get a decade. You know, you I do. think with Cage, we talked about this, right? Let's say Cage post-Oscar. He So, let's say he wins the Oscar for a 95 role. He does The Rock in 96. He has all those movies. By 2005, 
he's now entering the next phase of his career. He's made national treasure. He's got, you know, gone in 60 seconds. So if you're a legend like Nick Cage, you get 10 years as an A-list guy. If these guys both get 10 years as that guy, I think it's pretty fair to say Schwarzenegger, his is like, it's like 85 to 95. Yeah, I mean probably. Um, so if you look at if you look at Schwarzenegger and you go eighty five to ninety five, eighty four to ninety four, let's say, because yeah, you get... there you go. So eighty four to ninety four. So you get the Terminators, you get Running Man, you get Predator, you get Twins, you get Commando, you get Total Recall, you get Kindergarten, you get T two. I mean that is that is absolutely insane, and you still get Last Action Hero and True Lies and Junior at the very tail end of that. It's pretty massive. I don't think you can argue that that's not it. For for Stallone, it feels like it comes a lot sooner. It feels like it's more seventy nine to eighty nine. You think that it's a few years after Rocky, so it's it's by the so he makes if I remember correctly he makes Rocky one in seventy six and he makes Rocky mm-hmm. two in seventy nine exactly so in seventy nine he gets invited on the Muppet Show as a special guest star Sylvester Stallone so interesting. that's interesting right you're like the guy that plays a tough boxer is going to be on the Muppet Show as a mm. special guest star so there's clearly a huge level of respect for who this up and comer is right and then he goes and he does Rocky two right after that he's got Rocky three in there and First Blood. Ryan Stone, First Blood Part (laughs) 2, and Rocky 4, Cobra, Over the Top, Rambo 3, Lock Up, Tango and Cash, and then Rambo, or Rocky 5 comes out in 90. So I think if, yeah, I think if you were going to honestly choose, if you were going to choose the the real proper golden age for these guys, I don't think you gain as much from moving the bar away from Rocky 1 because of the Oscar wins. Mm Mm-hmm. To getting that late '90s, that late '80s stuff. Yeah, the late '80s, early '90s stuff is it's good. It's like it's kind of what you think about if you are a true action star. You're like, oh yeah, I'll just do Cliffhanger, Demolition Man, The Specialist, Judge Dredd, and Assassins all in three years. But those aren't great movies. Do you remember when we covered? Because we've covered a bunch of Stallone movies on Action Movie Anatomy. Mm-hmm. So I remember when we were doing the research for uh, we were doing the research for Demolition Man, I believe is the one. We were looking at his box office results from the 90s, and we were looking at, like, the way those movies were regarded. And it was, like, in our minds, we remembered the mid-90s Stallone run as being really big because we grew up with it. Yeah. But when you actually look at the way he was regarded and the way the movies performed, those 90s movies, for the most part, are garbage. Like, the couple of them people like, but, I mean, like, Cliffhanger is pretty well remembered. Uh, Daylight, I remember it, but it's kind of, like, people don't think that movie's very good. Yeah. You know, event like, Assassins and The Specialist. Most of those movies are kind of whatever. You compare those movies They're and stuff. Forgettable. That, you compare you compare the stuff that he was doing with his big roles. Different conversation. So I think you actually would. My guess would be his run really is seventy six to like eighty six. I don't. I don't. I think you have to include Rocky one. Otherwise, he he loses a lot of points. Yeah. I mean, then you. I mean, so what you lose from moving that that up a little bit is you lose Cobra over the top, Rambo three, Tango and Cash. So you're not losing a whole lot to gain an Oscar. So yeah. So seventy six. To 86. And, and here's the thing. I don't think you can actually continue this conversation past the fact of what we just said. Stallone won an Oscar for playing a role that he wrote. Yeah. that's. I mean, that, it doesn't get much better than that. They're both making an insane amount of money. And if, that, and if you do want to talk about money, you and I looked up in that year when he made Rocky Three and First Blood Part One in 82. Yeah. He made... Like the equivalent of like a billion dollars or something like that. I can't remember exactly no, what it was. No, it's, it's, it's 85. It's or 85, it's, it's, right, it's, right, It's Rocky right. Four and First Blood Part Two. Yeah. It's like even before inflation, it's like 700 million. It's insane. It's like one of the biggest years you'll ever see, the fact that it came in 85. Now, I think one thing we have to give Stallone a lot of credit here for and, and where we're giving Schwarzenegger a bit of a free pass mm-hmm. is that the action genre those guys populated didn't exist in 76. Right. It didn't really exist. Neither of them did. The like, one-man army or this 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 sports movie epic. Like '84, when when Schwarzenegger does Terminator, mm-hmm. and then he starts making all those movies. The back half of the '80s, First Blood was made in '82. Rambo: First Blood Part Two is a different kind of movie because those different kinds of movies were what the mid '80s were all about. Yep. So it's like almost not fair because you look at what he was doing between '76 and '85, and it's like. Those are different types of movies. Yeah, I mean, like like Fist is a good one, right? He plays like something Kovacs. It's like a union leader. It's like a late. It's like a late seventies. Seventy eight. Yeah. You know, like the <clears> movies <throat> that Stallone was getting cast in the late seventies were dramas. He was being taken seriously. First Blood's not supposed to be a big action movie. It's supposed to be a kind of a smaller drama about like, you know, post world like post Vietnam. Schwarzenegger enters in as a totally different animal, and I think the fact that they started getting compared to each other has more to do with the fact. That was Schwarzenegger's game, and Stallone tried to get on his corner. Stallone just started to try to get on the Schwarzenegger corner at the same time. Yeah, and I also think that it was just – it was also just what happens in the public, right? Two macho, shredded dudes 
good looking enough that are one man armies, you just you just inherently do it. That's just kind of what happens. I'm sure we've done it many times, even modernly with like, oh, who I mean, it's like who was more talented like five years ago? It was like, was it is it Ryan Gosling or is it Bradley Cooper? You know what I mean? Like we just do things. We just compare people that are in the similar of similar ilk. Right. And they've kind of always been that. It does it still does feel like the golden era though goes to Stallone. Yeah, if you're gonna I mean <clears throat> if you're gonna give credit where credit's due, the highlights are an Oscar win versus the greatest action movie of all time. Basically, it's like basically where you, what you're going to be dealing with, right? Yeah. You have, and some people argue that Rock or that yeah, the original Rocky is actually the greatest action movie of all time, even though it's not really an action movie. It's more of like a drama, a sport. You mean sports movie? Like or? A sports drama? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, people throw it as an action movie though. They Rocky. still do. Interesting. Yeah. So if that's their best. So what's their worst? What's yeah, the Dark Ages? And I think for both these guys, you know, you see the same thing happen, which is that we talked about we talked about this again on our other show a lot, but you know, <clears throat> what happens when 9/11 happens is that post 2001, the types of action movies that people were making were different. Yeah. You weren't going to you wasn't it wasn't all big guns and muscles as much, but the difference is Schwarzenegger made collateral damage T3 and then he took public office. Yeah. So he doesn't have that run in the 2000s that Stallone has where all those movies we mentioned, I See You, Avenging Angelo, like Get Carter, all those movies, they don't exist. Stallone has to deal with that whole period in the mid-2000s where he resurrects Rocky and Rambo because that's that's what he could do. That's what he was making while, while Schwarzenegger's a governor. Yeah, and he's like trying really, really hard to stay relevant. So it feels like... Yeah, I mean, if you go from, you know, Get Carter to ICU, Avenging Angelo, Shade, and then there's there's Rocky Balboa, which some people like. I just rewatched. It's all right. It's fine. And then, you know, he's got Rambo in 2008, but he's still trying to figure things out. He's got incredible love in there, Expendables in there. He's in. He's a voice of a lion in The Zookeeper, Escape Plan, Bullet to the Head. So it's like he's got a couple good moments, I guess, if you want to call, you know, 2008 Rambo a good moment. I mean, you and I love that movie. I think it's incredible. It's, it's great, <laughs> but there's a lot of bad in there. There's a lot of bad in there. And and it does feel like it's finally with Creed that he, he gets out of the hole. Yeah, I think probably if you're talking – the the biggest shortcomings of these guys is that like Schwarzenegger recognized that his career path was always to take these these you know the highest platform and just elevate it to the biggest thing he could. So mm -hmm. you know he married a Kennedy basically. <laughs> uh, he took you know took office. He was the governor. Kept making Terminator movies because they'd make a lot of money and he could be involved. Whereas Stallone, I mean Stallone even now like <laughs> Stallone. Uh, on his Instagram, put a video of Christian Harloff saying favorable things about the new Rambo movie. Right. He invited Roka to stay long at the junket because Roka asked really smart, poignant questions and Stallone appreciated that. So he wanted to talk to him again at the end of the junket. I happen to know for a fact he read the article that we wrote about him. He, mm. <laughs> we wrote an article for Popcorn Talk uh, about the new Rambo film. And the re one of the reasons we did it is that he's a friend of the network. So we thought if we wrote an article about it, maybe Stallone would read it. What did he think? Uh, I don't know what he thought. I just know that <laughs> Stallone read it. And, I mean, that's a, that's a credit to how interested he is yeah, in, in his craft. Even now, he's mm -hmm. like he's totally invested. And so um, that, to me, is like sort of the, the biggest difference about these guys is that when Schwarzenegger went into the Dark Ages, it had way, way more to do with the fact that like – There's a lot more silver lining in his Dark Age. He just was less interested in being taken seriously as an artist. When Stallone talks about his movies – he doesn't talk about any of his movies as though they're less. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't think about his biggest misses as like we can laugh about we like we can laugh about the parts of his movies that aren't good. We can talk about Rambo 08 is grotesquely violent and yeah. how awesome we think it is. He thinks of that that movie probably totally seriously. He probably thinks about Ram like Rocky 5 totally seriously. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. He's really an artist. Is. Those are his creations. He doesn't. Do you think any songwriter that like writes a ton of albums over twenty five or thirty years thinks about the one that is least regarded well as like a joke? No, they think about the I years mean, of their life they spent writing it. I mean, but you hear about those actors in interviews. They're like, oh yeah, that one, that movie. You yeah, know. But I think that there's a difference between common being like, yeah, I recognize the Terminator Salvation sucks because he's an actor in a movie versus yeah. still when he writes it or directs it, he creates something. Right? But do you think he really felt that good about Grudge Match? I don't know. I, I don't either. I, I, but but what you but the, your point though is is that we don't know because he's the type of guy that doesn't just shit on a project that he's he he's passionate about everything that he does. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I got to give the Dark Ages edge to Arnold. 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty tough to it's pretty tough to fight out his uh, the fact that he was the governor. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't. It's like during that horrible time that Sloan was going through, Arnie got to just ignore it and then come back. So, and speaking of coming back, the next thing we have up is the resurgence. Now, this is where things get really interesting because Arnold is kind of had a resurgence. He's definitely been, you know, like Maggie, and clearly a new Terminator Dark Fate. He's been doing it for a little while. He was in one of the Expendables movies. Stallone's resurgence really feels like it just was Creed. Even though he'd been working and he'd done the other Expendables movies, he kind of helmed them. This felt like the moment where it was like we looked at him the same way that they did back in 76. I think this one is, this one's a landslide. Like, yeah, 100%. I think about what's happened to Schwarzenegger since coming back, and the truth of the matter is, aside from the part of Genesis, all of Dark Fate, I don't think I've seen Sabotage. I don't think I've seen Aftermath. Aftermath. I haven't seen Maggie. Killing I haven't Gunther. Seen Killing Gunther. I haven't, like, he's done like eight movies or something like that. Ten, maybe even. Escape Plan, The Last Stand, The Kid and I. Oh, the Kid and I was 2005. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those movies. I think I've seen The Last Stand. That's the John Knoxville one, I think, right? Yeah, yep, I've seen that one. Uh, it's kind of fun, but I haven't seen any of the Expendables movies other than the first one. But yeah, so yeah, exactly. And, and the things he has coming up are Kung Fury 2, Superhero Kindergarten, a TV series where he's a voice, Triplets, The Legend of Conan, and Outrider, another TV series. So it's like... Okay, that's what you're working on. What is Stallone working on? He's working on Samaritan, Tough as They Come, The Expendables 4, and Scarpa. Scarpa is a... make The Expendables 4, huh? <laughs> it sure is. Wow. Um, but you think about what they've done in the last few years, and it, it, it does. It does feel like Stallone has it, just because he was so great in Creed and in Creed 2, and I, I like Last Blood enough. It b- does feel like it's just all because of Creed, though. Hundred percent. It can't be anything else. But I don't give. I don't give. Um, I give Kugler a lot of credit for Creed. Yeah. But I give Stallone a lot of credit. Same. I, I give him way more credit for the quality of that than I give Schwarzenegger for most of almost anything. Like it's like I think I think Stallone has so much more control over the outcome of those movies. Like I have a feeling that even though Kugler directs Creed, I have a feeling Stallone had a pretty major role in that. Yeah. Well, it's it, what's kind of fascinating about that is that you know Creed is not written. By Stallone, Creed Two was written by Stallone, and Coogler wrote the first one with Aaron Covington, and and I like the story of Creed more than Creed Two. Yeah, uh, Creed Two starts to get into that little bit of like Stallone doing his thing, right? You know, going a little going a little overboard, but I mean, do you, I mean, you said in a landslide, so I'm assuming you're saying for Stallone for the resurgence is all Stallone. Yeah, uh, that's e- that's easy. So I think the last thing to talk about before we get into the ranking and the and the snap. Mm-hmm. Is uh, just as a fan, as a general fan, yeah. What are your what are your top like one or two fist pumps per guy? Like what are your? I, let's, I think we could pick oh, three man. each. Oh, you know what? Speaking of fist pumps, we've got this really cool thing. It was a gift to Collider Live, and, and Josh Pakuga passed it on to us because we are the action guys. This is from Colt Badu, 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 Badu. It is a hand drawn insane picture of. The Predator without his mask on. It's, it's so awesome. I, I love it. We love it. We, we were starting to build a whole... When the action guys actually have a... Uh, when we actually have an office one day, we're going to have a pretty cool setup behind us of all yeah. the cool artwork we've gotten over the years. Oh, yeah. All, cool all, the, all the, like, team action and, posters and all the stuff that's yeah. been created. And we have, like, the Simpsons thing that Trevorrow gave us. That and thing's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of cool stuff. I mean, the trophies, the Nick Gilmore trophies. That, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a four-foot-tall trophy. All the, yeah, like the clothing. I mean, the brand is the brand is strong. Uh, so, Colt, big, big shout-out to you, man. Thank you so much. You're incredibly talented. And I'm not sure if you watch our shows or not, but but you should. And uh, we, we, we'd love to have you. So back to what you were saying, fist pumps from their careers. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in first okay. here. And I'll, I'll, I'll say career fist pumps. It's got. I got to go Predator. Uh, the first time you see Schwarzenegger when he comes out of the helicopter, just lean and mean. The polo. The tiny cigar. little red polo, yep. the cigar, his first lines. He's just like, feels like it's his prime. He's having such a good, he's like, all, he's like kind of always got that stupid yeah. smile on his face. He's so intense. He's just, a, he's an elite <laughs> killer. Uh, I think that's a huge one for me, Schwarzenegger. But, uh, yeah, if we're talking Predator, um, I actually, 
love the moment when his his like beyond white eyes open up when he's covered in mud yeah. and he's behind him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like so stupid, but also as a kid, yeah. I thought that was so genius to cover yourself in mud to hide from the thermo. Yes, yeah. yes, I agree. Um, I think secondly, career fist pumps, if we're going to go with that, I think I probably got to go with a Terminator. It's, it's either a T1 or a T2 moment. The thumbs up is still pretty great. Yeah, the, T, the T2 thumbs up is probably the one. I think um, I think him actually in the building after Dyson lets the thing blow up and he's shooting all the cop cars mm. uh, with the giant like grenade launcher or whatever. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty epic. I actually like in the original Terminator when he goes and just kills everyone in the police it, station. Yeah. It's so intense and badass and it's also like it was back before Arnold was just always a hero. Yeah. And to like see him play a bad guy is pretty awesome. I'm like a big fan of Arnold as a bad guy. I want to see him as like a legitimate bad old guy. I think yeah. he could really pull it off. Um, Stallone, I mean... There's the yo Adrian, we did it moment yeah. at the end of Rocky Two is amazing. amazing. The yeah. speech that he has with Adrian before the fight with Apollo in the first movie when he talks about how really he just good. wants to knock him down. Uh, I love that. Obviously, when he beats Drago, I mean, there's there's so many fist pumps in Stallone's career. And then if you even talk about Rocky, like late Rocky, I mean, yeah. he, ripped, he ripped the guy's fucking heart out. Yeah, <laughs> Rambo, Rambo, Rambo. I mean, Rambo. Yeah, <laughs> in the new Creed too. Uh, for me, I mean, I've talked a lot about a lot, but the, the Creed uh, in the ring because you're a Creed kid and I love you. I love that, you. That scene kills yeah. me. I think it's so good. Um, First Blood has some scenes that I really love. I love they drew First Blood, not me. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. I think just generally speaking, Rambo 08, the whole movie's a fit. Is like a huge so awesome. career fist bump. <laughs> it's like him him unloading the uh, the gun just, into the passenger seat and just like so exploding that guy <laughs> is pretty incredible. What about uh, what about sing sing, sing. louder louder? <laughs> oh yeah, we haven't even gotten to talk about that. I think I honestly truly believe that. Mr. Freeze, Victor Freeze, yeah. is Arnold's secondary career. His career role. fighting role. It really is for me. <laughs> it's the second take, one. Take off the lab coat. You're not a scientist. <laughs> I can make it fit. Uh, <laughs> I love yeah. So those are our fist pumps. Let us know down below in the comments some of your favorite fist pumps from their careers. There's, God, there's so many good ones. So now the really tough question. Yeah, I mean, wait, which of the snap? Yeah. You snap away an entire career, uh, one of these guys. So, you, so one of these guys never exists. I hate to I hate to even think about either of them. I for me it is a hundred percent. I snap away. Uh, it's Arnie. Wow. I have to. It, uh, Rocky was such a huge part of my life growing up. It's like all of my sisters, and my mom's favorite sports movies. We always watch them at Christmas time. If we don't know what to watch, we either throw on a Rocky movie or we throw on Lord of the Rings. It's always been that way. And, you know, you think about Creed and what it is now and, and how much Coogler and, and Michael B. Jordan have done with it and the story and, and, and honestly just how good those two movies were. You know, we're talking about the resurgence and how strong Stallone is in it. I don't think that you could have those movies without Arnie, whereas I think you can still have Terminator without Arnie. I think if you get another just yoked dude that doesn't speak the greatest English and can deliver those lines, maybe it works. I mean, obviously, you can't say it's going to be as good as Arnie because how could it be? But maybe it would have been. It's still directed by James Cameron. It's a tough one for me, but I think I would have to snap away Stallone. Um, wow. It's crazy to say it because, like, I— He's listening to the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I can't—it's such a hard thing to do, but I think the reason is this. Um, the two things in Stallone's career that are the most enduring are Rambo and Rocky. If, Ram if Rambo doesn't exist with Stallone, it just it's just an action franchise that exists with someone else. And even if he never existed, there's just some other action franchise that is the one we remember. Like but Rocky can't exist without Stallone. But again, Rocky really is about – it's about the story of like the underdog triumphing. Like that's like the, the triumphant underdog. It's a sports movie about that. So if it's not Stallone telling that story, it's somebody else telling a different sports story that gets immortalized as the first one that probably gets turned into a franchise. I, again, like I think Schwarzenegger had such a unique – there are so many factors about Schwarzenegger that sort of make the action genre what it is. It doesn't yeah. almost feel like the action movie genre can even exist without Schwarzenegger's contributions. Like he is the poster child for what that is. I, I mean I like a lot of the things that Stallone does a lot more than Schwarzenegger, but I can't imagine a world where we don't have Schwarzenegger as the Terminator, where we don't have some of those iconic 80s action movies like – he was always the he was always more of an action star. Stallone's yeah. just like he's the good actor. And, and like I love 
I mean, again, Roka loves twins. I love Kindergarten Cop. Yeah. I grew up watching Jingle all the way. I didn't really grow up watching many things that Stallone did other than the two things that we've talked about. So it's weird. When you go into ranking, I almost think that Stallone has got a better career, but Arnie is the greater action star. He's a greater action hero because half of Stallone's career are not action movies. They're right. Rocky movies. Uh, but and if you're going to talk about the more, the more talented well, artists— half of the Rocky movies are not action movies. Yeah, right, right, right. They, they become more action as they get— Yeah, I mean, I think from th- three— From the end of two, three on. Yeah. It's three and four are definitely action movies. 100%. Five. Six is not. Well, kind of goes back to drama, but— yeah. <clears throat> so I, I think if I had to give my ranking, I say Stallone has the better career, but Arnie, Arnie is the true action superstar of the two of them. I would agree with that completely. I think that Schwarzenegger is the greatest action star. He's the greatest action star of all time. He's uh, e- even more than Cruz. Like wow, the greatest action star of all time. I don't. I don't want to do that. I don't want to say that. Okay. I don't want to get into that conversation because <laughs> I feel like that's a whole other show. Yeah. Okay. I really do. We. Have, I mean, it's maybe it's Jerry B. The plane, anyone? Maybe it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just hope they, Hunter. I hope they just keep making Fallen Steven. movies. Steven. I do too. I really do. I want to see the Fallen, the fourth Fallen movie. Uh, Out of shape, Mike Banning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink. I've got a pill problem. So I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Watching at home, let us know. What is our? Do you guys agree with our categories again? Career defining role went to Stallone. Living in the shadow of the role went to Arnold. The golden era. Stallone had a better golden era, but Arnie survived the dark ages way, way better. The resurgence. We got to give it to Stallone with Creed, with Creed, with Creed, and with the uh, additional Oscar nom, and of course Rambo: Last Blood, j- Blood just coming out. The snap. We split it right down the middle. It looks I, like though that means that Stallone gets the win here because he wins three categories i know arnold wins two and uh and 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 the snap we're split on which means in the end based on what we're doing here we got to give it to stallone we do but i think i think it's a it's a slight audible in saying what we just said stallone has had the better career you can't argue it split decision split decision but arnie has is the true action superstar of the two yeah i think that's what we got to go i don't know what you guys think let us know down below in the comments and thank you guys so much for joining us on video once again. Yeah, this is awesome. We're so happy to be back on video. Uh, we're going to try to come up with more ways to probably integrate the visual component of the show to to make it bigger and better. Um, be sure to check out Action Industries, which is our that is our personal YouTube channel. We do yep. content there and streams. Uh, that Patreon show we talked about doing. It's a head to head debate show. It literally is us debating awesome topics versus patrons with the other one of us judging it. And it's it's going to be live streamed. It's going to be available, I think, to all people. But yep. the only people that can compete. Our patrons. So the way it works is with five contestants every single week. One of them will be me or Drew. One of them will be a patron at any level, randomly selected, and three of them will be patrons at the twenty-five dollar or higher level. So we're going to be, you know, submitting the topic and having you guys write in two sentences to an email. If you want to be a part of it, so I think probably let's let's tease the first this, this I, I, next one. Definitely. I mean, we we did last night. We had an amazing show with Wiley Todd, Nick Gilmore, AJ Lancaster, Luke Sweezy won over Ben in the final round. It was a tough loss. Debating what the greatest Jack Nicholson role is or was ever. And now, in two weeks, or I guess in 13 days, I will be competing for something that you and I have been talking about for a long time. Yeah, this is going to be the greatest the greatest comedy of the 1990s. Yes! So Drew's going to have to pick one of the classics. We, there's so many good ones there's there. You can, so we could be talking many. Wayne's World, Austin Powers. We could be Tommy Boy, Dumb and Dumber, Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison. I mean, there's Ace Ventura. There's so many good ones. Uh, so Drew is going to be going head-to-head against four other people. Be sure to check out patreon.com slash teamaction if you want to go watch last night's episode. And if you want to be a part of it, send an email between now and uh, let's see here. So it's uh, today is the 4th. Yesterday was the 3rd. Yep. So the next show is going to be on the 17th. Yep. The next show is going to be on the 17th. Of November, uh, all submissions have to be in by Friday the fifteenth, uh, and we will be sending out confirmations on Saturday the sixteenth. So, if yep. you want to be a part of it, send an email with the subject line "Commanding the Army Comedies," "Commanding the Army Comedies" to Action Industries Brand at gmail.com. And the best way to do all that is just to go check out Patreon. All the details will be up there so that you guys can join along in the fun. This is a lot of fun. I, I really like this episode. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say down below in the comments about who you think takes which co- uh, which category and, and if we came out with the correct answers. So uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. And check out Collider Live, a brand new Collider Live every single day, 10 to 12 here on the Collider Live network, hosted by Roxy Stryer, Darina, whose name I can't think of offhand right now. She's Evil Darina yeah, and Mark Darina. Riley. Uh, and that's going to be a show from 10 to 12, Monday through Friday. So check that out. Subscribe, turn on notifications. And as always, guys, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching.
We salute you. Bye.